We tried to tell you, folks. It's just a matter of whether or not you listen. That's Richie Bradshaw, Locked On Sun Devils, joining me here on the show. We tried to tell you that Arizona State is not going to finish in last place in the Big 12. And here they are with a dominant win over Wyoming, which is what good teams do, and with their first ever SEC win. This is not the first SEC win in 10 years. It's not the first of the Kenny Dillingham era. This is the first time ever that the Arizona State football program has beaten a team from the SEC and they covered to boot. Richie, the vibes in Tempe seem like they could not be any higher. And I like the Kenny Dillingham, Kenny Dillingham hire from the moment that it took place. I think he's done a lot of the right things. They got hit in the transfer portal, but this team is still, they still have Cameron Scadaboo, and that's all you need, right? That is all you need is the person who I have personally dubbed as the people's running back because he runs it. He catches it, he passes it, he punts it. He does everything. And you can't not love this guy. The fan base is so energized whenever number four gets the football. And and fun fact, good things happen when he gives Cameron Scadaboo the football. This past weekend, he ran for 262 yards on 33 carries. By the way, second most ever in a single game for ASU. Uh, he was 50 yards off from first place. Eno Benjamin back in 2018, who ran for 312. But it was nonetheless a historic game for Scadaboo, where it was just chunk play, Spencer. It was eight yards, nine yards, 12 yards, 14 yards, eight yards. His longest carry of the day was 39 yards. It was the last carry of the game, and he slid down to stay in, in bounds. Like this was just a terrific performance, and it's been a terrific run game for ASU. They are absolutely dominating the trenches. And they've got a ton of running backs who can do a ton of different things for you. It's not even just about Cameron Scadaboo because they have the Carlos Brooks. They have Relique Brown will hopefully be back pretty soon. In the meantime, Alt McCaskill is there. Tyson Brown is there. They've got weapons in this backfield. And quite frankly, they kind of need to because they're still trying to figure out the passing game. But at least through the first two games, you're masking it pretty well with one of the better rushing attacks in the conference. And I don't know where they rank nationally. But I have to think that they would probably be at least top 30. I don't know, but it's great. Yeah, and you're going to hate me for this next comment, Richie, but the comparison is all too perfect. I, I don't think that Arizona State is the Arizona of last year's Pac-12, RIP, where you know their win total is one of the lowest in the conference, and then they end up pushing to make the conference championship game. I don't think ASU is there, but they were picked to finish last in the preseason media poll. You and I both thought that was ridiculous because it absolutely was. And right now, with how this Arizona State team is playing, we'll talk about this week's matchup in just a moment because they have got a real fight ahead of them if they want to go into Big 12 play at 3-0. and and, and by the way, I don't care who they beat out of the SEC. On the surface, if it's a bottom-tier, quote-unquote, Big 12 team and a bottom-tier SEC team, should be SEC advantage all the way, but Arizona State was better than Mississippi State, and it looked a lot closer than it actually was. They had a huge lead, and then the Bulldogs, to their credit, kept fighting and, and stormed their way back into it, and ASU held on. But when you look at where Arizona State fits into this Big, big 12 conference in the landscape, Richie, it, it feels like Big 12 teams cannot ignore the Sun Devils and just write them off as an easy win. No, and last year in the Pac-12, I've talked about this before, is this is a program in Arizona State that didn't know how to win. They won three games last year. They were in four other games, including against Washington, who was one of the top five teams in the country at the time in Seattle. The problem with that Sun Devils team is they didn't know how to close games. And instead of getting seven wins, they only got three. And they were tight wins, too. They didn't really have any dominant wins last year. This year, they're, they're showing that they know how to win. You have a blowout win over Wyoming. That's what you were supposed to do against Mississippi State, a team that I thought you stacked up really well against because it felt like the two teams were kind of in the same direction with a new head coach and a rebuilding program. It felt like a good benchmark game for you. You needed to come out and see how everything looked from, from this rebuilding perspective and see if you were ready to take that next step. And lo and behold, they were, and they held on late. When they needed to, they let their foot off the gas. They shouldn't have. You had two critical drives. You were able to stop Mississippi State on offense when they were rolling, and you were able to chew up the rest of the clock and eat the game away. This team knows how to win 
compared to last year. They don't win Mississippi State last year. This team is way ahead of the curve where where they were a year ago. Much improved from a culture standpoint. Yeah, and their preseason win total is four and a half. That was one of my favorite overbets of uh, the, the preseason, and they look well on the way. Now, their Big 12 schedule is really tough, but before they get there, they've got Texas State this this weekend in San Marcos, their first road game of of the year. How confident are you in Sam Levitt's ability to guide this Sun Devil offense to a win against a team that most people probably didn't, didn't pick this one up, but far be it for me to ever overlook G5 football. Texas State played UTSA. That is a big in-state game. That's a big G5 game. Sun Belt against the American. And Texas State blew the doors off of Jeff Trailer's team, who's a really good coach, got a good program, one of the favorites in the American. Texas State won huge. I don't even remember what the final score was. It was just an absolute landslide. This is going to be a tough game for Arizona State to win because Texas State suddenly looks like a player for the G5 playoff spot. Yep, and you're going to San Marcos, too. It's not like you have them in Tempe. This is a very quality team going into the year. I wasn't sure how I felt about it. It's one of those where it's like, in in theory, you should be able to beat them. You're the more talented team because you are a power four, but they have played very well, and they're running the football very well. They absolutely dominated this past week against uh, UTSA. So ASU's run defense has been absolutely unstoppable this year. They are through two games. They have not allowed a hundred rushing yards. I don't know if they've allowed 50. They have dominated, which is where you need to win the game. But of course, going back to Sam Levitt, like you said, you need him to play at a, at a level where he's managing the game, but you know that in a pinch, you can win with him. You saw that in week one where he wasn't really asked to push the ball down the field but he still threw for 250 yards and two touchdowns. Last week, he went 10 of 20 for 69 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. ASU, uh, Kenny Dillingham will tell you himself, he said in the post-game press conference, you know, we felt really comfortable running the ball a lot, but we probably needed to make sure we stayed balanced because when we needed to start throwing the football again, uh, Sam's not in a rhythm, and that's a that is a problem. So ASU needs to maintain some kind of consistency on offense, not even like a 50-50 split, but they need to make it so that if Sam Levitt gets called upon, you don't have what you had last week. Because if that happens, you're not going to win a lot of quality football games this year that you should be able to win. ASU looks like they can hang around with the best of the best. If they're going to do that, they need to place Sam Levitt in a position to succeed which means that you just keep him on on task. Maybe he throws the ball 40 times again. Maybe it's just 20 again. But make sure that he stays in a rhythm because if you have to pass, you you need him. You need him. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Uh, one, one last thing, Richie, before we wrap up today's show. If Arizona State goes into San Marcos and beats Texas State, that's a two-and-a-half-point spread, according to our friends at FanDuel, by the way. Sun Devils are favored, but... Uh, that's that's going to be a really exciting football game. If they win, what's your confidence level that they could beat one of the heavy hitters in the Big 12 on their schedule this season? I'm not going to lie. It goes through the roof. You play the top five teams in the Big 12 this year. Two of them are home, back-to-back, Kansas and Utah. This is a huge opportunity for you to come out and knock off one of the big teams in the Big 12 and go, hey, We're not the bottom dwellers. In fact, we're closer to the top six teams than we are the bottom three teams. It's a, it's a fantastic opportunity and in a, in a stacked schedule for the big 12, because you still have UCF Uh, Cincinnati is fine. It's nothing crazy. BYU I feel has been competitive this year. We'll see how they end up down the stretch. It's not a walk in the park for their big 12 slate, but you could, the way they're playing right now, you could find a way to beat Kansas. Utah, it, it really depends on Cam Rising, but neither here nor there. Yeah, I don't know if you get a road win in Manhattan over K-State. I've said since the start of the season, I continue to say it. You are taking the cup back when you go down to Tucson and beat Arizona. Okay, uh, well, Arizona's look vulnerable. <laughs> I've heard of crazier things happening. That'd be, we'll we'll see. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll see where, where the teams are at, at the end of the year. I'm confident. I am confident, bottom line. 
And I think justifiably so. I think Kenny Dillingham's got a lot of good things going down there in Tempe. That's Richie Bradshaw, Locked on Sun Devils. Richie, enjoy the time as always. Absolutely, Spencer. It's always a good time to talk some college football with you, even better when it's ASU. Yes, indeed. Appreciate everyone listening. I will see you next time. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.